The Liquid Fusion is the first all-in-one 240mm liquid CPU cooler from Enermax with addressable RGB LEDs, allowing for unique lighting effects in the two fans and the water block. The block also has a clear panel with a flow indicator and there's an inline high efficiency ceramic bearing pump. If you're looking for a CPU cooling upgrade, click the Liquid Fusion sponsor link in the video description. Excellent! It's not even all the all the components. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to today's build video. This is the largest and most expansive build I have ever attempted. The goal today is to give you guys a first look and an introduction to the new Corsair Obsidian 1000D case, which you might be able to see sitting at the back behind all of this incredible hardware that I'm going to be putting together. This build is going to be called Riptide. It's a Threadripper-based build, and there's actually going to be two systems involved. The first system is Threadripper 1950X based. It's going to be for video editing as well as gaming uh, with two GTX 1080 Ti's. And then the second system is going to be a FreeNAS build, and that's going to be based on an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G APU. So I'll get the 1000D out and go over that in just a moment, but uh, real quick, let's go over the rest of the components for this build. And in case you didn't notice, by the way, uh, this build is sponsored and supported by Corsair and Asus. So you're gonna notice a lot of Corsair and Asus components. Starting with the ROG Strix GTX 1080 Ti's. A pair of those, I've already worked with them before. They're really, really solid graphics cards, very high end. Gonna start with them air cooled and maybe eventually water cooled them. For the motherboard, we got the ROG Zenith Extreme X399, the highest end ASUS ROG motherboard. This board is an absolute beast. It's completely feature packed, so a perfect central home for this system. For storage, I have a collection of SSDs, starting with the NX500, the new Corsair NVMe. This is a 400 gig drive, so that's going to be a boot drive for the main system. There's also an MP500 NVMe SSD. Uh, this is a 960 gig drive, so this is going to be a functional drive for video video editing. And then I got a couple Force LE SATA drives. I'm going to be using one of these as a boot drive for the FreeNAS build, and then the other one uh, will be additional storage in the main build. Here's the main CPU, of course, the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, um, which is currently out of its box. The box is really just there for show. Uh, but then, of course, on top of that, we have the 2400G. Uh, chose this actually based on a recommendation from Wendell because uh, they can be underclocked and undervolted to run at very, very low power draw and also are compatible if you have the right motherboard with ECC memory. And ECC memory is very good to have for a FreeNAS build. I don't actually have my ECC memory yet, but I do have this kit for the main build. This is the Vengeance RGB set, 128 gigs. Yeah, this is the most memory I've ever put in a single system or on a single motherboard. 8x16 gig, 3200 megahertz kit, and RGB lighting too. So everything you could want in system memory. I sure hope it plays nice with Threadripper. The secondary system will be on a completely brand new motherboard from ASUS just launched. This is the X470-i Gaming from their ROG Strix line. This is probably a little overkill for my NAS build, but again, I wanted something that would support the Ryzen 5 2400G processor and also have some expandability and of course that ever important ECC support. This also has like two M.2 slots and some other cool features like that. So we'll get that out of the box in just a sec. For power over here, we've got the Corsair AX1600i, which is 80 plus titanium rated 1600 watt power supply. So plenty of power, actually overkill. Actually, I could even potentially run both systems off of this power supply, but um, there will be an SFX power supply that hasn't arrived yet for the smaller system since the case does support both of those. Now I got a crazy amount of RGB LEDs going on in this case. It is Corsair sponsored. So, so they sent me five of their Commander Pro. Uh, it's an RGB lighting and fan controller combo. So hopefully I can connect up all of the fans. Since this case supports something like 24 fans, uh, they sent me a couple sets. These are the LL series of fans. So they've got really cool RGB lighting effects. Uh, I have a bunch of 120 millimeter fans. They did send me a set of 140 millimeter fans there as well. So I have plenty of options when it comes to outfitting this case with fans. And this case supports lots of fans. And finally, if there wasn't enough RGB LEDs in the fans, uh, we've also got a couple RGB LED lighting expansion kits here from Corsair. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what's involved there, but it is additional RGB LED strips. So uh, also works with the Node Pro and Commander Pro. So these should help to cast colorful lighting on areas of the case that aren't reached by the fans. 
I think it's important to set some goals for today. So the main thing is gonna be to get everything unboxed and then to get the main components into the system so I can figure stuff out for the upcoming custom water cooling loop. Uh, also, I need to figure out cooling for the processor. So that should be fun too. Uh, for now though, I'm just gonna get everything out of the box. All right guys, here's a first look at the case now that it's out of the box. The box uh, was very large. This is a very large case. This is one of the biggest builds I've ever done. Uh, but fortunately, it wasn't that challenging to get out. You gotta slide the top of the box off kind of like you would when you get like a new TV. The side panels actually come separate, so there's no side panels on it when you take it out of the box, although the front tempered glass panel is pre-installed right there. And then of course, there's another tempered glass panel that goes on this side and then one on the flip side on the back too. There is also a tempered glass piece that goes along the top of the case. Uh, I have not peeled the protective uh, plastic off of that yet, but um, that's all the tempered glass you get. Here at the back of the case, you might notice an extra power and reset button specifically for the Mini ITX build because you can, of course, fit two systems inside this case. Now, the first system is going to go right here in a pretty traditional orientation vertical. Uh, it can support up to EATX and beyond motherboard sizes since there's plenty of space. This entire top area here is mainly made for like radiators or reservoirs or whatever you want to put up there. Then the mini ITX build would go down here at the bottom. So the IO for, for that would be here facing out the back. And these are the uh, knockouts for your graphics card or expansion slots if you need them down there. Here's a look at front panel IO, power resets, four uh, USB 3.0 ports. You got a couple USB type C ports right here and these are USB 3.1 uh, Gen 2. So they do use the new connector internally and then you've got a mic and headphone jack as well. So guys, I've got everything out of the case and uh, went ahead and removed all of the plastic protective pieces on the tempered glass. Just FYI, I am aware that you should usually wait until you've finished the build to take all those plastic pieces off. Uh, I'm gonna try to use my, my nitrile gloves to keep from getting fingerprints and smudges on the case for the rest of the build. But a couple things I wanted to mention about this case. First is gonna be the price. It's $500 MSRP, 500. So, so I hesitate to say $500 is a good price. It is obviously very expensive. It's a lot more than people typically spend on a case but given that this can actually handle two systems and it is fairly unique and a bit of a flagship item from Corsair. Remember the 900D was Corsair's first case ever that they launched and that was a full tower case and that did very well for quite some time. But if you guys come away from this video with a key piece of information, it would be that this case does not ship with any fans. So that I think is kind of the price trade-off that we're dealing with here, more practically speaking. This can of course support like up to 20 fans, maybe even more than that, depending on uh, how you're configuring your radiators and everything. But Corsair's reasoning for that decision is just that if you're building a really high-end PC and you're custom arranging it, that you might want to choose your own fans. Now that might mean that you choose Corsair LL series fans like I have chosen today, or it might mean you have some other favorite type of fan that you want to integrate here. So uh, that's either a cool thing that Corsair didn't bother to choose your fans for you, or a not cool thing because fans are expensive and outfitting this with a whole grip of fans, like 20, would significantly add to the base cost of the system. All that said though, let's round out the features by pointing out just a few more of them. Uh, Corsair points out this is a three chamber design for this system. 
One of the chambers is the power supply chamber for the main power supply down here at the bottom. Can support up to a 220 millimeter length PSU, so it's a pretty decent size. Just about any high-end power supply should fit in there. The second chamber would be this main chamber, I suppose, and here is where your motherboard go. Both systems actually in this chamber. So whether you've got a standard size motherboard or EATX, or this also supports like a server size motherboard like SSICEB and that kind of thing, uh, plenty of cable routing holes, and then they've also included some holes up there at the top so you can route stuff back behind the motherboard tray. On the other side of the case over here, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of cable management space. That's because Corsair, in order to keep things looking clean, uh, since there is tempered glass on this side panel as well, they basically have hidden away the cable management area. It's behind these doors. So these are just held on by magnets, just like the main side panels, and you can swing them open to give yourself a look at the actual cable management zone. So for cable management, you get about three inches of space between the uh, motherboard tray and these doors that swing out. So uh, maybe two and three quarters inches. Plenty of space though. Uh, here you can also see the pass-throughs for those cable grommets. And then we also have mounts. Uh, you actually have four mounts here and four mounts here for SSDs or uh, 2.5 inch drives. Uh, it looks like they've mounted three actual drive mounts on either of these. I haven't checked the accessories to see if you get additional ones of those. And just checking our accessory package, it doesn't look like you get additional 2.5 inch drive trays. So uh, bear in mind, if you wanna go beyond six, you might need to get some additional drive trays from Corsair. You do get some removable plastic drive trays here for your 3.5 inch drives, and the uh, case supports up to five 3.5 inch drives, which is actually one fewer than I need. I, I was hoping for six. Figure it out though. And then the last thing you might notice here is the Commander Pro. This is an Obsidian 1000D version of the Commander Pro, but it does appear to otherwise be the same, except for that text that says Obsidian 1000D. This gives you a bunch of extra connection points for fans, as well as LED strips. And then you also get some uh, temperature connection points there, so you can put some temp sensors. And then those extra USB connection points there allow you to daisy chain these together, so you can connect lots and lots of fans, RGB strips, and temperature readout points. Uh, which is good, because I have, I have an extra five of these. I feel like that's too many, but I'll see how many I actually need in order to get all my fans connected up. And this is also what makes this case a smart case, because if you connect up your Commander Pro to your operating system via USB, you can use it to monitor your fan speeds, temperatures, and then have the Corsair Link utility automatically control those to keep everything cool and quiet in your system. And here's a quick look at the included accessories in the Obsidian 1000D. Uh, you get some fan extensions, since you might be needing to place fans in a position that is further away from your motherboard than a typical case. This is a SATA adapter for providing power to the Commander Pro. This is an extension for that adapter. These are temperature sensors. They've included four of them, so you can uh, connect these to your Commander Pro, position those in your case to get temp readouts. Uh, you've got a bunch of baggies of screws and standoffs, uh, fan mounts. Uh, they are separately bagged, so I always appreciate that. Finally, a very decent stack here of Velcro straps, some zip ties, as well as this uh, bracket for your rear I.O. And this will allow you to rotate your uh, graphics card 90 degrees if you want them facing up instead of sideways. So guys, there's obviously more features to this case than what I've shared with you already, but I don't think I'm gonna learn more about it unless I actually build a system in it. So let's do that next. Here goes.
So here on the back of the case, there's an extra panel. It's got some hex uh, mesh built into it. This is basically like, are you gonna use the ITX uh, mount or not? If you're not, you leave that on there. It covers the IO for the mini ITX. It also covers up this space here, which is where an SFX power supply would go to power your mini ITX build. I'm still waiting on the SFX power supply for this build, so I'm not gonna get the mini ITX system all up and set up today, but that's at least where it goes. Getting the power supply installed, this shroud needs to be removed in order to do that. There's only two thumb screws, one at the back, and then there's one behind the motherboard tray right there. And then at first I thought it was really hard to get off, but it was just stuck a little bit. So probably just since it's a newly manufactured product, and then that pops out, we can install our power supply. Also, there's a removable filter for uh, dust for the power supply. Well guys, the build is proceeding. It is getting later in the day though, and it's getting warmer here. So I have to kind of figure out where we're gonna stop this phase of the build and then plan stuff for the next phase. Cause part of the reason I'm getting everything set up in here is so I can get measurements for cable extensions that WASMODS is gonna do for me. Uh, and also just gotta figure out where all the fans are gonna go. Cause I got a bunch of fans, but not exactly the plan of where everything should fit. Now, one thing that you may remember from when I first covered this, when it was called, called Project Slate at Computex, is it has these really cool like drawer system for pulling out uh, the mounts for your radiators and fans at the top and front of the case. This will fit 340 millimeter fans or a 420 millimeter radiator. And then up in front is where you can have up to eight 120 millimeter fans or 360 or 480 millimeter radiators. Uh, and you can also do 480 millimeter radiators up at the top here as well, though I, I think you need uh, to swap this piece out. These, these are roughly the same size but it's got different mounts here, so the tray in between. So you could swap this top one with this one if you wanted to. For right now, in order to get a system running, or at least half of the system running, because the uh, FreeNAS build at the bottom isn't gonna be ready until the SFX power supply arrives, I am going to take my single 360 millimeter radiator and mount that to the front uh, with some of the LL series fans. And then I'm gonna take some more LL series fans just to sort of flush things out, give you guys an idea of how to look lit up. Uh, across the top and for an exhaust in the back. All right guys, I am exhausted. I'm kind of sweaty. It's pretty warm in the garage. And this is the most involved and complex build I think I've ever done. Um, for one, accommodating two systems in the same case is a bit of a challenge and I'm not even connecting them all the way up right now. The one thing I'm most concerned about actually is access to the power supply cage down here with the second system set up. Uh, definitely when we go in here for the second try and um, we start in integrating the water cooling stuff, I'm gonna plug in pretty much all of my modular power supply cables there to make sure that if I ever need to plug anything extra in that I don't have to completely uproot this lower system in order to get at that cage. Beyond that though, the LED implementation for this build is pretty complex and I'm only running with seven RGB LED fans now as opposed to 20. I also wanted to point out that uh, I didn't fully populate the front uh, of the case with all of the fans, and that was pretty much because I realized I was gonna need to mount this radiator up there. I also need to provide something else to go along with part two, I suppose. But everything should be at least functional. We hope, we pray. Ooh. Oh, wow. I'm so happy now. <laughs> like, like, I was, I was a little concerned that if it didn't work that I would have an aneurysm or something like that. But fortunately it is. 
All right, guys, that is pretty much gonna do it for this video. And I know what maybe you're thinking. You're thinking, Paul, the build's not done. That, that system on the bottom doesn't even have a heat sink fan or like a power supply. And I would say, yes, you are correct. And that's been my plan this whole time. I by no means was intending to finish this build today. I wanted to give a first look at the 1000D since it's brand new from Corsair and the successor to the 900D after so long. Uh, it's huge. There's tons of room to work with in there. Not without its quirks, but uh, for 500 bucks, I think people were looking for a super high-end case that can fit two systems in it. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with it so far. Now, of course, I will have more to say after I finish this build, and I will be installing water cooling stuff and actually using some of the additional space in the top and the front to do bigger radiators to actually fill out all of those fans across the front so that will look a lot more uniform. You kind of do need to fill all eight of those fan slots in order for it to look normal. For now though, this is gonna have to do it. I can at least get the main system set up and uh, get windows loaded and maybe start messing with the Corsair software as well because right now this is just the default fan setup um, with just plugging it in and turning it on. Also, I need to reorganize these fans and make sure they're plugged in in the right order so we can get the actual full-on Corsair lighting uh, experiment going because that's something that despite the difficulty of setting it up, once I do get it set up, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the thumbs up. I'll put links to as much of this stuff as I possibly can down in the video's description, so click on those if you wanna help me out. Uh, and finally, thank you so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button, and we'll see you in the next video.